Alright. I just figured I would show. Oh, I'm just printing this part off. It's a screen color for my screen cover for my Ender 3 Pro. But I am printing at 70. 40, 40, 40. You guys can see all this here. And a thousand. Let me a second. Acceleration. I'm going to show you the print. It's not going to look as fast as you'd think, only because this is a big open print. If it was something smaller, then you'd see the ch -ch 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 -ch, like the back and forth and the actual movement a lot more when you're doing something this big and you're printing at this speed. It actually looks kind of slow, and I'll show you what I mean. I'm actually plus 120. Right now it's just finishing the first layer of infill. That's why it looks all choppy and you can still see it. The first layer over top of the infill always looks choppy. And it never fully fills it in. I mean like this. Very first layer ever layered, uh, laid down over top of the infill. This is being printed in uh, G Tech standard black, not shiny, not anything. I'm printing at 210 uh, and 60 only because of the speed. Oop. Phone's getting pushed. Woo. The phone's so fast like that, I think it's gonna smash into the phone. This is the stock. 8-bit board that came in this thing when I bought it three years ago, the 1.1.4 running the newest TH3D uh, Unified Firmware 2 I like it over Marlin 2.0.95 I think, 9.5 or whatever the newest release is I also had that on the 8-bit board and I loved it, I just didn't like the fact that there were no uh, auto level assist. I don't mean like auto level like this, but when you're manually doing it, how it automatically goes to all four corners in the center for you. There wasn't any of that. This has that five point, all four corners, plus the center, plus it has uh, one button color change. So if I wanted to change this color right now, I could hit it and it would pick a the machine itself would pick a good stop, spot to stop, and then it would ask me to pull all the filament out, or it would eject a different amount, then it would tell me to pull it out and reload whatever color I want in, and then it would prompt you to do a bunch of things like purge it until the color comes out the way you want, and so on. I don't know, I like this filament. Even though my bed says G Tech also, I just have an abundance of the sticky sheets. So I stick them on pieces of glass that I cut myself. And it tends to work rather well. It's kind of funny though, see what I mean by how it looks slow, even though I'm still at 120%. I'm actually 20% faster than what those speeds are you've seen over there. Which is kind of odd that it's still going the speed that you'd think that it, look, it is. But it looks slow, only because the print's so big. I could prove that by doing another video after this with the identical speeds with a print that's actually just a small little cube. And watch how fast and ridiculous the printer moves. Sorry, I got something in my mouth. I'm just trying not to choke on it while I'm talking to you guys. And 
that was the 10% increase going from 120 to 130. It took a while for the machine to line that speed increase into the G-code. So if you think about it, as it's going back and forth, there's a huge list of G-codes that this thing is running. All, you know, going down in a massive sequence. Uh, as soon as I tell it to increase 10%, it slips that in there, so I have to wait for that G-code part, the 10% speed increase to reach all the way at the top of the line, at the top of the queue, in its turn for, you know, essentially it's waiting for its turn in the line. But if I haven't posted videos enough about this, it's essentially a stock uh, 1.4 motherboard, 4 TL smoothers, uh, one on every axis, external MOSFET for the hotbed back there, custom wired, and everything by me, so it was done the right way. No cheesy, cheesy cutting stuff up or any of that. Uh, got a cork liner underneath my bed to keep it insulated because where I print is kind of a little chilly so I don't like the fact that the heat bed has to come on all the time. And other than that and uh, me relocating my extruder all the way up there to keep all of my extra weight off of the Z axis and the print head. I want to print fast, and I want to print fast with good quality. To do that, you want the print head as light as possible, I would assume. That's why I also run the thinnest glass I can find. It doesn't break when you handle it. I had some really, really thin stuff. It was like 1.5 mil thick, and I had like a two foot long sheet of it, and I picked it up and the glass from its own weight of picking it up, I mean, because it was two foot long, it cracked in the center. Still got cut up into printer beds, but I'm bad for breaking them. Half the time is from setting it, like doing something with my printer, or changing a color, setting the glass down uh, on my computer chair, and then going and sitting down and not realizing that I, the glass is there, and yep, sitting on the glass. Or when I take them downstairs and I wash them uh, in the sink and they get all soapy and slippery and I end up dropping them while I'm rinsing them and then that's another reason or way I break them. Clumsy that way. That's why I buy my own glass or find it on the sides of the road or free or anything. People give it to me. People know that I want it so... What's really good is that mirror, you know, uh, I don't really know very many houses I have it now, some people still like them, but those mirrors that are actually the doors to bedroom closets, they were like popular in the 2000s and the late 90s, where those sliding vertical doors, similar to these over here, but instead of them being that wood stuff, uh, they're like mirror. Well, those work really, really, really good too, because on the back of them, they have this, uh, like, woven sheet. It's super, super, super thin. Like, maybe one thou thick, it's like barely anything. But, uh, it's like, in case the mirror breaks, then it's, uh, instead of it having to be tempered, it can shatter, and then it holds all the pieces together. Kind of like a safety thing, in case the mirror broke in the bedroom while your kids were in there, then all of the thing would stay together and all the pieces would stay together and it wouldn't be, you know, big giant mirror knives everywhere.
This G Tick film is pretty good, I like it. I'm gonna try to stand up here. Ow. That's hard on the legs. No, that's not screwing up and going over. The edge of the print is rounded. I had to look on Kira to make sure that was part of the print because sometimes I see stuff like that and I'll stop the print thinking that <clears throat> my printer is doing something it shouldn't be and then I go back to Kira and realize, oopsies, I shouldn't have stopped the print because it's doing exactly what it should be doing. So, yeah, that's why you always use the preview thing and uh, look at the edges of your prints to make sure that that's supposed to be like that. Because it is. It's supposed to be leaning out just a tiny little bit like that. So I got other piece over there. I'd like to thank the person uh, and Thingiverse that made this cover. It's a minimal one. I was going to get and print the designs for the one that flips over and stuff, but I figured, eh, whatever. I'll just print this one that just slides over. Because really, uh, it's not the cover of the screen. Well, my machine's printing in the dark because I don't have it somewhere I sleep. It's just in a computer room area where my other printer, 3D printer is sitting, and my Cricut Maker is sitting. And the two computers I use to control them. Well, one computer is designed just to mess around with the 3D printers and the Cricut and the other tower, the gaming machine. I'll do a review and a video on those later. And with the next thing I'm going to print is, is a camera mount. I think I've said that in two videos now, but I'm going to do it. One that goes on the bed, so as it goes in and out, then it doesn't change the way that it looks. Alright, then I'll go back and I'll show you again in here just to verify. We are 130%. So at 30% plus, uh, these, actually hold on, let me do that because this is technically what the machine will be doing now. Those of you that you've seen at the beginning of the video, I forgot, I modified that for the next print because I figure if I'm going to do another print about this size, then if I'm going to have to increase the speed on the machine 30%, why not just increase the speeds here, right? Especially where or where I want it to be. But this is what it's doing right now. 70, 70, 35, 35, 35, 40. 175, 20, 20. So on. And then a thousand all the way down. No jerky control. Alright. Stay tuned because I'll pump her faster. And, uh,. We'll see how far we can just push this old school 8-bit board with a very recent Merlin. Alright, like, subscribe, comment, appreciate it. Helps out huge. Thanks.